A liar is someone whose words are false. A liar cannot be trusted. We cannot coexist with liars. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hidden details in the Netflix series Three Body Problem. For those who Five, haven't watched the series, four, there are spoilers ahead, three, as well as some discussion of the Three Body one, book trilogy the show is based on, including some key revelations from the text. Slow or dumb and we die easy. Or bugs. Number 10, The Follower. This is my follower. You may call her follower. Whenever Jin Chung and later Jack Rooney enter the world of the VR game at the heart of this series, it's usually the case that everything has changed. But there is one constant. The follower is a seemingly ever-present character, appearing as a young girl who Jin and then Jack must attempt to save over and over again. We're gonna save you this time. Like all the other times before. The problem is they never succeed, and this affects Jin in particular. The follower gets a lot more fleshed out during a later episode, however, when a passing scene reveals that she looks exactly like a young Virier. And so, perhaps Jin's seeming attachment suddenly makes a lot more sense. Are you back to save the world? I hope so. Number nine, characters in the game. You're an AI. I am the Count of the West. So a character in the game then? Enough talk of games. Sticking with the game, many of the names assumed by characters in the game are a direct match to those that appear in the book, with Jin going by Copernicus, just as her comparative Wang Miao does on the page. Newton and Aristotle also appear in the original texts, although Alan Turing is an addition specifically for the show, appropriately appearing during a scene featuring an ancient computer. None of the men are mathematicians, of course, but they do all know how to hold a flag, one way or the other. Interestingly, many of the game's side characters are also played by a who's who of British comedy, with Reese Shearsmith, Mark Gatiss, and Phil Wang all getting screen time. Elsewhere, Augie's colleague Dennis Porlock is also played by a Brit comedy great, Aid Edmondson, although in a not-so-funny role. What am I missing? We're on the precipice of being first to market with a unique nanofiber technology. And you slam on the brakes. Number 8. The Acronyms there's someone behind everything. You just have to dig. Well, I dug up this. The books that this series is based on are quite simply stacked with acronyms. There's the Earth Trisolaris Organization, or ETO, the Planetary Defense Council, or PDC, the PDC Intelligence Agency, or PIA. The setting up and breaking down of endless groups is essentially a key theme throughout. For many, it may be part of the author Liu Suxing's overall goal to question how valuable such political groups ever actually are. We're holding a summit for you and the other Level 4 champions from around the world to welcome you to the organization. It's also one aspect as to why the books have before been branded impossible to adapt to the screen. However, the Netflix show does a good job of addressing and glossing over any acronym confusion with one typically dry line from Dashu. Who do you work for? Used to be MI5, then it was SIA, now it's PDF. No, that's not right. PDA, P, it's just letters. What is your job? Number seven, three wall facers instead of four. Tell me about your project. Have you ever heard the term wall phaser? This is another that anyone who hasn't read the books will almost certainly have missed, but it may have even passed by those who have. The wall phaser program comes to the fore in Liu Suxing's second book, The Dark Forest, as the character Luo Ji is plucked from obscurity to front Earth's fight back against the Trisolarans, known as the San Ti in the show. So, how can we win? How do we keep secrets from an adversary who sees everything? Who is watching us right now? Luo Ji's role is taken up by Saul Durand in the series, but where Saul is selected as one of three wall facers, the original Luo Ji was one of four. The change is most likely just to streamline the story for Netflix, but it does mark another move away from the text all the same. A wall facer's work is carried out in secret, in the solitude of the mind. I don't know what's inside your mind. Neither do they. I do not want this job. Number six, the space fleet. I thought I comported myself well in Panama. Oh, you're looking for commendations. Maybe you should go back to the Navy. 
sail around in circles wearing a funny hat. Squeezed into the middle of episode 6, this scene somewhat sneaks into the show, but its implications are vast. Up until now, Raj Varma has been Jin's kind of unlikable boyfriend, and a hard-hearted lead during events on the Panama Canal. So what do you think is happening? I think we're at war. But here, his role changes, and readers of the books finally realize who his most likely parallel is, Zhang Beihai. In the books, Zhang Beihai is a major character as the action moves from Earth into space. He's a pillar of triumphalism, the mindset that Earth can and will ultimately succeed against an alien force and he ultimately plays a pivotal role. Following this power play moment between Raj and Wade then, we can safely assume that Raj will become a lot more involved in the future. Put me on the Space Fleet team. Done. Thank you. Number 5. Dasher's Son So this, all of this, is this real? Because if this is what real is, I'm not interested. At the other end of the scale to Raj, Dasher's son Reg is shown to represent another key mode of thought in the books, escapism, an offshoot of defeatism. As a very minor character in the first season, Reg might only have been there to occasionally highlight just how out of touch his gruff but lovable father is. However, in Episode 7, his character is given a little more significance when he reveals that he set up a company promising to enable customers to relocate off of Earth. What's the great escape? It's my business. Mine and Ali's. Dasher seems unconvinced, however, and if Reg's plans play out like they do on the page, then there could be rough times ahead for him. How's someone going to escape into outer space for 40 quid a month? It's like a pension account. You put in money every month and that grows and creates more money, so the next month there's an even bigger pile of money that's growing. And you know, do the maths. Did you do the maths? Number four, only advance. Their technology moves slow, ours moves fast. That's why they're going after our research. Fine, let them do the worst. As the series progresses, Wade develops a seemingly innocuous motto, only advance. From the beginning, it's clear that this decidedly shady character is not to be messed with. But overall, he seemingly justifies his loose morals and questionable actions with the ominous ambiguity that these two words imply. What is this plan, this amazing plan that no one else but you can handle? Only advance. I don't know what that means. Going by the books, it's a good bet that this is a phrase we'll hear again, and probably multiple times, as Wade is set to really push the envelope. But clearly, if advancement is the only thing he cares about, he could very well prove a dangerous man to know. We're not sending a camera. We're sending a human being. Number 3. Ye Wen Jie's Fate In nature, nothing exists alone. For the most part, the story of Ye Wen Jie plays out on the screen much as it does in the books. Mike Evans isn't her daughter's father on the page, but apart from that, it's pretty close. That is, except for in the books, she actually kills two people, including her husband. Netflix leaves this particular part of her origin story out, but seemingly does nod to it during Ye Wen Jie's final scene at the top of Radar Peak with Tatiana. It'd be horrible. That fool. Might not even happen right away. In the books, Ye Wen Jie cuts the cord while her husband and another are scaling the cliff face to ensure her alien communications are kept secret. In the show, it's implied that Ye Wen Jie is about to jump from the same cliff before Tatiana shows up, promising an unknown alternative. I wanted to see one more sunset from this place. Can we watch it together? I like that very much. Number two. The Fairy Tales and the Goldfish Bowl. That's unavailable till the new year. Can you wait? I will be unavailable then as well. By the end of season one, Will Downing has turned from being the quietest of the Oxford Five to becoming the single most important brain that humankind has ever produced. But along the way, he brandishes a couple of pretty important props. First, with his book of fairy tales, far from providing light relief as he battles illness, they offer a direct link to the breakthrough made earlier by Evans regarding the Santee and the telling of stories. So the story, it is a lie about a liar? 
Yeah, I suppose it is. Second, the goldfish bowl. In one sense, it's a gift to symbolize the closeness of Will and Jin. But readers of the books will also notice that it possibly relates to a particular scene at the very end of Yu Sushing's original trilogy. It's for you. A little housewarming for when you're too lazy to look at the ocean. I love the little fellow already. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Saul's Destiny Einstein wasn't right about everything. If anyone can figure this out, it's you. While the show takes its time to tell the stories of all the Oxford Five, Saul Durand doesn't really come to the fore until the first season's final episode, when he's selected as a wall facer. And finally, the third wall facer, Saul Durand. However, at the same time, he's also the first of the five friends that we meet, when Vera finds him hard at work trying to make sense of physics that's seemingly broken. In the books, Saul's parallel character is Luo Ji, who's also selected as a wall facer, and embarks on a unique life from there on out. And in what could prove to be a genius piece of foreshadowing, Saul's first words seemingly hint at the journey he's about to experience. I knew you'd be the last one here. Here till the lights go out, boss. What was your favorite scene in the series? And which of the hidden details did you find most satisfying of all? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Let's get back. We've got work to do. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.